Hi guys, I don't know about you, but I find it uh, very difficult to take in a whole bunch of data by just looking at a stream of numbers, and I find uh, that the same information in graphical form uh, a lot easier to read. And um, I realize that the graphs that I put in the last video, HH06, were not as clear as they could be. What I've done is reproduce some of the graphs in Microsoft Excel so as they're a little bit easier to uh, see. Each of the graphs are created with the uh, information that I gained from uh, the tests that you can see in my video HH06 and uh, you can see the test set up in HH05. And just so that there's no misunderstanding, all the way through uh, this series of videos I've stressed that I'm more interested in the efficiency of producing gas rather than the volume. Once I get a good understanding of, uh, uh, of the characteristics of uh, the gas and of the uh, different cells that I'm going to play with, then I'll start looking at creating higher volumes. Uh, this graph, uh, it, you can see it's headed the production rate, and that's in milliliters per second. So that's the volume of gas that's being produced by the cell. And what I've done is carried out a, a series of trials at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 volts. And that's the same on each of the graphs that uh, you'll be seeing and that's on the x-axis and uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with that the x-axis is the uh, the horizontal one the one that goes from left to right at the bottom and if you can't remember which is x and y-axis just remember that uh, an x is a cross uh, so uh, it's a cross and it's a cross <laughs> so I hope that makes sense and on the uh, right hand side, on the y-axis, uh, I'm actually measuring the milliliters per second. And to say, that's the data that was gathered in the uh, tests shown in HH06. So the first thing you see from this is that, by and large, it, it's pretty much a straight line. and um, there's, I haven't done any work in the 0 to 5 volts range yet and I, I suspect that's where the most interesting work is going to be funnily enough but uh, say I haven't I haven't looked there yet but essentially you can see that as the voltage goes from uh, 5 volts to 10 volts um, we step up uh, almost one complete uh, row and then we go from 10 to 15 volts we step up another row and then 15 to 20 and uh, 20 to 25 and 25 to 30 it's pretty much consistent and by consistent I mean that it's it's going up more or less in proportion for each time we uh, double the voltage uh, so we doubly double the amount of gas produced so from that you would say uh, working at a higher voltage will deliver more gas there can, can be no question about that but remember I'm interested in efficiency and this is only showing the uh, volume of gas produced for a given number of volts put into the cell but again, look at the graph. There can be no doubting that if you double the voltage, you're going to get more or less double the uh, volume of gas produced. So as you increase the voltage, you'll get a proportional increase in gas production, more or less, more or less. OK, here's the, uh, the next graph, and at this stage you could be forgiven for saying, man, that's boring, it's just another straight line like the last one. But bear with me. And uh, this has uh, got the heading current into the cell, and um, uh, on the x-axis across the bottom there, we've got our uh, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 volts DC 
into the cell and uh, on the uh, right hand side sorry on the left hand side um, on the y-axis we've got uh, the current there going from uh, 0 to 1.6 amps remember I'm using uh, water out of my dehumidifier so it's effectively dis uh, distilled water um, so no additives at all so this uh, low current um, but again you'll see that um, th th as we increase the volts from 5 volts to 10 volts uh, we go up approximately uh, one row um, then as we go from uh, 10 to 15 it, it's more or less the same and so it looks pretty much proportional to uh, the rise looks pretty much proportional to the voltage that we put in um, so uh, there is actually something going on in this cell um, that this graph doesn't show from the data that I gathered, I can tell you that the DC resistance of the cell, when I'm applying 5 volts, looks like 35.71 ohms. Now what I'm going to do is draw in another line that shows the current that would be drawn by a uh, resistance of 35.71 ohms. So what this uh, brown line shows, uh, the lower line there, uh, that shows the current that would be drawn uh, as I apply 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 volts to a resistor of a constant 35.71 ohms and you'll see it's considerably less current than the uh, shown on the blue line and remember that blue line is the actual current drawn by the cell as the voltage increases so you can see beyond any shadow of a doubt that the resistance of the cell or the apparent resistance of the cell changes depending on the applied voltage and say so that was a real revelation for me I've never realized that water had that property let's say this comes a, a real surprise to me as uh, for many years I have built uh, lots of uh, very large industrial equipment with uh, working at uh, 8000 volts 12000 volts DC and I've had water cooled uh, anodes on valves and uh, I've it, say it just come as a complete surprise to me that water possesses this uh, variable property the next graph shows the resistance of the cell you'll find if you use a regular meter to uh, measure the resistance of a, a cell uh, you'll get some strange readings as uh, it actually starts uh, to look a, a bit capacitive and uh, you don't get a constant reading at all and to produce this graph what I've done is uh, measured the voltage and the current at 5, 10, 15 volts etc and um, plotted the resistance and here you can see at 5 volts uh, the resistance is uh, it's almost 36 ohms it's actually 35.71 ohms and then when I applied 10 volts and calculated the resistance uh, then it's dropped to 26.31 ohms and uh, it carries on uh, falling at um, uh, not such a dramatic rate but nevertheless uh, quite a steady rate from uh, from 10 volts to 30 volts and at 30 volts the resistance is uh, 20.83 ohms so uh, just under 21 ohms so quite a significant difference and remember that uh, this cell is um, constructed from two sheets of 316 stainless steel uh, they're both 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters 
with a one millimeter gap between them and the water is uh, from my dehumidifier and there are no additives in the water okay the next graph shows the uh, production of uh, HHO gas in terms of watts times seconds per milliliter so in other words for every milliliter produced it requires so many watts for so many seconds and that's plotted on the left hand side and then at the bottom on the excess x axis we've got our voltage as uh, as usual okay if we look at the 5 volt test figures it took 44.8 uh, uh, watt seconds to produce one millimeter of gas and as I moved up to 10 volts it actually took 72.2 watt seconds to produce one millimeter of gas uh, so in other words I've gone to a higher voltage and we've seen from the previous graphs that we get a, a higher production rate but I've had to work harder, or the cell has had to work harder, um, by a disproportionate amount. As we move on to 15 volts, it takes 91.14 watt seconds to produce one milliliter. And then at 20 volts, it takes 115.24 at uh, 25 volts it's 140 uh, watt seconds per millimeter and then finally at 30 volts it actually takes 172.8 watts times seconds per milliliter so what you could say from this chart is that if the cell had a constant uh, resistive characteristic uh, then uh, the gas that is produced at uh, 5 volts at uh, 44.8 watt seconds uh, per milliliter would be a straight line uh, across the graph but as we apply a higher voltage so the water breaks down and we're putting watts into the water t uh, resistively so we're just developing heat in the water rather than uh, it actually doing a lot of work for us in terms of producing HHO so the higher voltage uh, although it does give you an increase in gas production uh, it also wastes quite a lot of energy and that waste of energy uh, brings about this uh, disproportional power requirement uh, to essentially produce the same volume of gas so remember I'm not concerned about producing large volumes I'm interested at this stage in the efficiency of producing the gas anyway I hope that was clear uh, this next graph is simply the reciprocal of the one I've just shown you. So the one I have just shown you was uh, watts time seconds per milliliter and this is uh, the inverse of that and this is milliliters per watt second. It's just another way of looking at the same data. Okay, the uh, little insert I've put in there is uh, a graph you've seen before. That's the production rate in milliliters per second uh, against voltage. Um, we've already said that as you increase the voltage, so you get a, um, an increase in gas production. And um, if we go back to the main chart now, we can see that as we increase the voltage so the efficiency reduces and the upshot is that the uh, harder you drive the cell in trying to get to, to produce uh, more gas for you uh, you actually wind up wasting uh, a lot of energy 
I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.